you are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome back here to a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Locked On NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke. Join alongside co-host Sarah Bettinger. Both of us are Broncos analysts for the Locked On NFL Network and Nine News. You can follow me on Twitter at Cody Rourke and Fail. Follow Sarah at Sarah Benger. Also, the podcast is available on all your favorite social media platforms. And also, make sure you hit that subscribe, follow button on your favorite audio podcasting platforms, not to mention here on video format on YouTube. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by our good friends over there, rockauto.com, amazing selection, reliably low prices. All the parts of your car will ever need, rockauto.com. I'll tell you about them a little bit later on. But Sarah, uh, this is a fun day here because you know we're going to go over some Broncos news and notes. But we also get to answer a lot of Broncos country's questions that they have after one week of preseason action and a kind of a possible time frame. We're going to see a lot of the starters play here this week. Yeah, it's really exciting and some great questions from the fans. So I'm I'm pumped to dive in. And uh, man, me and you may actually spark some great discussion, unlike what was asked to Vic Fangio today during the press conferences. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, just got to throw that shade early on here. But yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, you coined it as 100 ways to not get an actual answer about the quarterback competition. <laughs> and, and look, I, I do share this view because, you know, at the media, I understand the job of all of us. We want to try to get answers. We want to try to get insight. But the reality is when you're asking a head coach the same question, Five different ways about, you know, hey, who's got the edge in the quarterback competition? You're not going to get an answer. It's just like it's beating a dead horse. But like Sarah goes back to what we were talking about. This is a time where there's 85 players on this football roster right now. 85 players that have stories that need to be told. I'm more interested in maybe the right tackle competition. I'm more interested in, you know, behind a guy like Trinity Benson, who's other wide receivers that have caught your eye, a practice coach. Like these are things I feel like need to be asked but you know it, it's always quarterback 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 and I, I get it but there's so many other storylines here to this but let's talk about uh practice uh, you know today for the broncos and, and you know obviously alzheimer's awareness at the uc health training center always a great cause there will be a march that the broncos will participate in on september 18th and it's all for a great cause finding out ways to raise money for awareness for alzheimer's research and potentially a cure love that the broncos heavily involved in that, but the storylines of practice, no Patrick Sertan, no PS2 at practice. And Vic Fangio mentioned a couple of days ago, not to be worried. He's just got some lower extremity soreness. Uh, are you necessarily worried about this? I'm not just because we saw him play. And I imagine this is just a little bit of a process of, you know, your body's catching up to you now after your first NFL game. I think so too, Cody. I think you're right. It's nothing to worry about, you know, the fact that he wasn't carted off the practice field or anything yesterday or when, when he got hurt, um, that that's encouraging. So I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think the fact that, you know, Fangio said after the practice that he got hurt and, you know, he probably could have kept on going, but we just want to make sure he's, he's good. I think after last year, you know, there's a little bit of hesitancy from the Broncos to just kind of throw guys right back out there. And not that they were doing that last, last year, don't get me wrong, but I think just in terms of especially a guy who's as valuable to them as Pat Sertan is, you know, you're definitely not going to rush any even minor um, scrape up or whatever he had um, happen to his lower extremity. So uh, definitely not worried at this point. Yeah, I'm not too worried either. I don't know how much we might see him play. Obviously, the, the talk of practice this week when he was participating, he was getting some roles in the nickel with Kyle Fuller, Bryce Callahan, and Ronald Darby getting some time on the outside and him working specifically on the inside. I just think that there's so much you can do with a guy like PS2 with his skill set that Vic Fangio's over here. He's just rubbing his hands together. He's like, you know, hey, I got everything that I need. And we're going to see that unleashed this year, Sarah. So I'm excited about that. Obviously, Von Miller returned to practice. Father Von, uh, you know, now becoming a dad. We've talked about how that's motivated him so far this offseason. I'm excited to be able to see what maybe he could bring to the table. Back to the defense this year. He and Bradley Chubb, fully healthy. I mean, just the construct of it is interesting. But something worth monitoring. Andre Mintz, the undrafted rookie for agent we were talking about, we were excited about. He and Jonathan Cooper, he's in concussion protocol. So that kind of puts his status for Saturday into question against the Seattle Seahawks. And then Malik Reed is now done with a little bit of an ankle issue. So what do the Broncos do at outside backer this upcoming week? 
Man, it's time for Derek Tuska to, to really make his uh, make his presence felt. And I think that as much as we've talked about Jonathan Cooper and even Andre Mintz on the show, or if you read my stuff at Predominantly Orange, like talked about those guys a ton. And Tuska's kind of been just on the back burner. And even on the Broncos' initial depth chart, he was on the back burner a little bit as well. But man, he actually played really well against the Vikings. He had a couple of really good pass rush reps, a couple of really nice ops in their run game. And so I think that he's got an opportunity now to say, you know, we've talked about other guys. Hey, what can you string together either in practices or in preseason games? Well, here's your golden opportunity to string something together and really do a, do a good job two games in a row and prove like, hey, if you guys are keeping five edges, you know, maybe consider putting mints on the practice squad instead of me. He's got to make a case for it, right? Obviously, a seventh-round product out of a Division II school. Last year, the, the knock on him was his size. He's got to get stronger. And like I said, I think he had a great rep. It was in the red zone period where he pressured Kellen Mond to force a throwaway. Michael Jamudi, a great coverage, knocks it away. That's exactly what you need. I mean, you need to knock quarterbacks into the dirt. And, and we see it so often here in these preseason games. The, the difference between you making the roster and not making it could become – one of those pressures, one of those contacts where you force a quarterback into the ground. It really could be that. That's how crazy it is. And just really one final note before we get into our Broncos country Q&A, answering Broncos fans' questions that they sent into us. I, just, uh, I texted with an NFL coach, Sarah, and I the hoopla that we see around practice, I said, hey, how much do you really invest in all the stuff, all the stuff that's being reported about the tempo of practice? He says, we don't care anything about that. The thing that we look at as a coaching staff is we look at our position units. If we're coordinators, we look at our specific group. What are we, are, are we learning our concepts? Are we going through our reads and progressions? Having the fans there is an element where everyone's going to micro analyze things. He says, but as a coaching staff, we look at what we're doing. We're trying to get as many reps as possible. And then we're going to go back. We're going to look at the film and then we're going to maximize that going into the next practice. Here's what we can improve on. Here's what we did really well. Here's what we can build upon. That's what coaches look at. So people, please let's stop freaking out over practice because it's continuing again you thought we would have learned already based on what we saw the prior two weeks and then we see preseason action the broncos overall look really well on for every unit for the depth that they have so enough about overreacting about practice folks come on let's get it together uh, but with that said coming up here in just a moment sarah and i we're going to answer broncos country's questions that they sent into us on twitter heading into this week some potential storylines trade rumors and more. But before we do that, let me tell you about rockauto.com. They're one of the sponsors of today's episode of the show. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Often at times, these stores carry only specific brands in their warehouses, and it often takes time to get delivered if you need something specific. rockauto.com has everything for your vehicle if you need anything for it. And the thing I like about rockauto.com, Sarah, is that I've used them multiple times. I've used them for new floor mats for my car, for a new steering wheel cover, for a new sun shield. I could easily get that down at the local auto parts store, but I rock with rockauto.com because the prices are always reliably low. And for example, I can get specific brands. Their catalog is so unique and remarkably easy to navigate. You can quickly see all the parts available for your car or truck based on year, make, model, brands, specifications, and even the prices you prefer. Always reliably low for professionals or do-it-yourselfers. That's why I rock with rockauto.com. And I want you to go to rockauto.com right now to see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on Broncos in there. How did you hear about his box so that they know that we sent you? Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts of your car will ever need. rockauto.com. All right, Sarah, jumping into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. Just a reminder, you get this podcast on all your favorite audio podcasting platforms. Make sure you follow or subscribe so you never miss an episode every single day. Sarah and I have you covered with the best objective Broncos news coverage and analysis that you can get out there today. Short, sweet, to the point, and we involve you, the fans, and what we do. And that's exactly what we're going to do right here, right now. So, Sarah, uh, we post some questions on social media for Broncos fans. Hey, if you had any questions, Send them into us on Twitter at Cody Work NFL at Sarah Bettinger. And, you know, Sarah, I'm going to have you start off with the first question of the day. We got quite a few and a lot of great ones at that. Who are you starting off with? Yeah, we had uh, at Dork Draft and, and our buddy Tim Wenz both asked the same question. And a number of people have been bringing this up to me in recent weeks. But people are interested to know, Cody, who some surprise cuts might be. Uh, mm. coming up for the Broncos. And I think obviously, you know, with the roster being as deep as it is, there's there's definitely the potential that we could be kind of raising our eyebrows like, wow, I can't believe that guy got cut or can't believe this guy didn't make the team or maybe this 
other young player surpassed an older veteran player. So interested to know some of your thoughts on that potentially. Any surprise cuts on your end? Well, you know, I go back to just looking at some of the position battles that are ongoing, Sarah, and, and like I could be I could be surprised that like if Deontay Spencer or Tyree Cleveland, if any of those two players get cut, I feel like it would be a little bit of a surprise considering that we saw Deontay Spencer be the guy, the punt returner, kick return option the last two years in Denver, really getting that chance. And then outside of that, you know, maybe even a guy like Alexander Johnson. I mean, with the emergence of Baron Brown and coming back to practice, Justin Sternod, who's going to continue to get a lot of reps, and Josie Jewell returning from injury. I mean, there could be a serious angle where the Broncos do release Alexander Johnson. I, To be honest with you, sir, I haven't heard his name talked about much throughout training camp practices, joint training camp practices with the Vikings. And that's kind of been a mystery to me, but it kind of has me leaning. Could he potentially be one of those surprise cuts? I'm with you on that, man. I think that's really a fascinating name, you know, and I think that, uh, of course, you know, you want to look at guys who maybe have high cap numbers or higher cap numbers considering yeah. the Broncos right now. They're they're 30 million almost under the salary cap right now. And of course, we know that whatever they whatever they have at the end of this season is going to carry over into 2022 when the cap is expected to go up substantially anyway. So I think you could look at some potential higher priced guys like Alexander Johnson, not necessarily higher priced considering some linebackers around the league now are making up to $19 million, Fred Warner. So <laughs> I think the three plus million is, is very affordable for Alexander Johnson. But at the same time, you know, we're talking about the potential of having a long term starter in Justin Cernod at one of the two positions there. So I, I wrote about this this morning and it, kind of, it makes a lot of sense to me anyway. So the way that I look at it is you already missed an entire year of Justin Sternot. He had to go on injured reserve last year. Are you going to waste, and I'm going to say waste because I think it would be, are you going to waste another year of his development just to see Alexander Johnson potentially walk in free agency next year? Um, yeah. He's going to be 30 years old. Sternot is a younger, cheaper option, potentially better in terms of coverage, at least what we've seen and, and heard about in the early going. So, I think while that would be really surprising in terms of Johnson being a big name guy who was, you know, really beloved by pro football focus two years ago, I mean, I could see it happening. Well, I actually, you know, I was going to get to Ty's question. Ty Walden, good friend of the show there. He had, you know, mentioned something. Is there a chance that maybe Alexander Johnson gets traded before the season starts? I mean, that could be, you know, a possibility, but I think we kind of answered that without actually answering your question. So Ty, we didn't directly answer your question but I think that's a good point there. Um, Sarah, the question I got comes in from our good friend at new type underscore JK 47. He asked the question, how often do you think that we will see multiple tight end sets compared to previous seasons? It seems like this will be more of an integral part of the offense for success this year. And he hopes to see that more regularly in terms of establishing an offensive identity, you know, for you. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Because last year we saw the Broncos open up the season with 22 personnel, right? They had two running backs in well, actually it was 21, not 22. They had two running backs in and one, tight end and they had two receivers on the outside uh what what do you think about more multiple tight end sets for the broncos this year i, I think it's a great question i think it's going to be much more than we saw maybe last year even um don't know the exact statistic on how many how many times or what percentage they were in in uh, two tight end personnel last year but i think that if you have a healthy noah fant and a healthy albert okawebunam you have really great options in the passing game there. And and we could see this, you know, when I think of, you know, now you automatically think of, well, two tight ends on the line of scrimmage, but this could be, you yeah. know, you split Alberto out wide or you make him a big slot or you do the same with Noah Fant. And as you talked about in another episode, Cody, I think we saw the value of having multiple tight ends in terms of pass protection, really creating for those weapons that the Broncos have on the outside. And, and, and that was huge, you know, to see even Eric Saubert, who to me, when he was coming out of Drake, definitely known more for his receiving skills, but to see him come in and provide a huge pass pro rep on that big 80 yard touchdown pass from Drew Locke. I think that we could see plenty of two tight end sets for the Broncos this year, not just in terms of hey, we want to get our, our our athletes split out wide into big slot or, or split them out wide and create mismatches that way. But also, too, I think they're establish the run this season and make their passing game go that run game. And so I think it's going to be essential that they use that quite a bit this season. That goal line package is going to be very fun to watch. I could see a three tight end set. We could see 13 personnel when the Broncos get in the red zone. But I also think, too, having an extra tight end, a guy who's really good at blocking there, Sarah, I think extra pass protection, as we saw in the Drew Locke situation, I think that's something that the Broncos 
they used a little bit towards the end of last season. And ironically enough, Sarah, those plays happened when Drew Locke was playing better down the stretch for the Broncos. So there is something in place, and Drew had touched on it, that this is something that he and the coaching staff said, hey, let's just pick up right where we left off last year. And so far it looks like it's done really well for Drew. Um, but outside of that, any other questions that you have from Broncos fans? Yeah, I got a good question from Scott Coleman. Uh, can we rotate the offensive linemen, or is that a good idea uh, since Muti looks ready? So. I mean, that's that's a very interesting question because you get a lot of, you know, a lot of talk every every year about wanting continuity, this and that and the other. But it seems right now the Broncos have just a lot of guys who might be ready to to start and play. Uh, what do you think? What do you think about that question, Cody? What do you think? Rotating offensive linemen or how, how do you think that's going to work out? Well, I'm a believer in what you said about continuity. I think that's probably more important than anything else. I do think that in certain packages, right, we're just talking about 13 personnel or 12 personnel. I mean, you can get creative with certain guys. How often do we see an extra lineman added in red zone periods just so you can have an extra force there? I don't think the Broncos would be opposed to that. But in terms of their general offensive lineup, I can't see them even in the regular season rotating series between like Graham Glasgow and Natani Muti or Graham Glasgow and Quinn Miners. It just, it doesn't make sense in the regular season. Now I think right now in the preseason probably makes a lot of sense, right? Rotate guys, see what you have there. Uh, but the reality is I think that each of these players have a depth option behind them. You don't want to risk one of those guys getting banged up, rolled up on, right? Because then if you lose two offensive linemen in a game, bang, I tell you what, it's not going to be pretty. Because then, for example, let's say you're rotating a guy, your second depth option, he gets injured, and let's say that your starter the next week gets injured. Who do you have behind him? You have to bring a guy up from the practice squad. I think it's super risky, Sarah, uh, to rotate. I don't think the Broncos need to do it now. I, I know the, the desire because, look, I know you want to see Natani Muti. I want to see Natani Muti, but – Graham Glasgow does have this year in his contract where, you know, he's guaranteed a lot of money and the Broncos can't afford to not play him unless it's just, you know, a bad performance, which I don't think that's going to be the case. Graham Glasgow has never struck me as the guy that performs or underperforms. His issue was injury. So can he stay healthy? That's the biggest question. And if he stays healthy, that's great. But if the Broncos want to move on after this year, Sarah, they have an easy out to be able to do that without having to be penalized too much. And they, I think they also have the cap space too. If they want to take it, they can. I just don't know if they want to do that. So that is an interesting question. I'm glad that Scotty asked that. And Broncos country, we're going to get to some of your other questions coming up here to conclude. Locked on Broncos here today, coming up here in just a moment. But let me tell you about the other sponsor of today's episode of the show. That's a good friends over there, BetOnline.ag. And BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action with the NFL season in full swing now with the preseason. And then you got the regular season coming up. BetOnline has you covered for all your football news, odds, and info, not to mention other sports as well. The NHL, the MLB, the NBA, and all of your UFC MMA action, they have you covered over there at BetOnline. So you don't have to sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for the start of the regular season. So I want you to head to the website or use your mobile device today and sign up today and you can receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use promo code LOCKEDON. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. All right, Sarah, jumping into the fourth quarter action of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. We're going through answering Broncos country's questions. And Broncos country, just a reminder, we value your perspective here on this show. If you have any questions you want, our DMs are always open. You can reach out to Sarah. You can reach out to myself. You can comment in the YouTube comment section. We will respond. We value your input and your perspectives as fans. And we look forward to even if we have disagreements, we look forward to having those civil conversations about the team that you root for on Sundays. But continuing on, Sarah, you know, we had a great question by Scotty about the offensive line rotation. Do you want to move guys around? I've got a question in from Aden Diaz, and he asked the question, how much of this preseason do you feel will be needed for the coaching staff to decide who to keep and who to cut. And, and, you know, the reality of this, or my personal perspective, you already know who your 53 is for the most part. There's a couple of question marks, but outside of that, you're already starting to piece together who you want on your practice squad here about probably this time of the year if you're a coaching staff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that the games do play a big role in it, though, because I think you want to see how these guys respond when they're in game situations, you know, like we saw a couple of years ago, and we've mentioned this before with Malik Reed coming out and just having an absolute massive game in the preseason and then getting put on ice for the fourth game. You know, he was that good that they didn't even use him in the fourth game when you typically see a lot of undrafted players or players fighting for roster spots have to go out there and kind of make their last, uh, you know, claim at a spot essentially. So I think the games do play a big role, but Vic Fangio talked about this and I think this is huge. The lack of a fourth preseason game really, really limits what you're able to see from those guys who are 
kind of you know the way back end of the of the 90 man initial 90 man roster now it's down to 85 by next week it'll be down to 80 but I think it does limit them a little bit to have fewer games and and with a team like the Broncos you know you're not necessarily solidified at obviously the quarterback position or a couple of other starting positions. So you're really trying to evaluate some of these guys and, and still develop that pecking order. But for the most part, I, I think I would, I would say you're spot on with that, you know, where you've got your 53 pretty well in place at this point, kind of planning for, okay, if, if somebody suffers an injury, we may, we may like this guy better than this guy. Uh, we may prioritize trying to get this guy back over this guy. So I think that they do have it pretty well, in their minds. I think you can kind of, you can kind of see that a little bit, but I think there's, you know, a couple spots every year up for grabs. And, and this year there's some interesting position groups where that's the case, you know, obviously defensive back wide receiver, some of those more glamorous positions where there's roster spots available for the taking. Um, I think that these last two games, especially are going to, are going to tell us a lot. Oh, I'm excited to be able to see what they can because, like I said, we're going to see a majority of the starters this week. Sarah, I would be so surprised if going to that third preseason game, I get it's a home game against the Rams. I would be so shocked if we see much of the starters at all. This, in my opinion, we're already seeing the Kansas City Chiefs are saying, Andy Reid's like, hey, this week our starter is going to play the first half and then our twos and threes are going to play the second half. So you want to use this as kind of your dress rehearsal. And this might be the first time we see guys like you mentioned, like Cortland Sutton, Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, just these guys that, you know, we didn't see too much of last year due to injuries and Bradley Chubb coming off the injury, the slow start last year to be Sarah. I, I think it's really intriguing to look at all the potential possibilities. Uh, you know, we're seeing guys like Justin Simmons just absolutely have a field day as a ball Hawk. Can he do that in a preseason game? Look, I mean, he's so talented. This Broncos defense is talented and they're making the quarterback's life a living hell, which is a good thing because it goes to show you how tough this defense can be. But now you're going to see your starters against another team's starters. I think Russell Wilson poses a really great test to the Broncos defense this upcoming weekend. Uh, but outside of that, Sarah, is there one more question you want to lead off with from a member of Broncos country before we wrap up today's show? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of our, you know, the one of the great interactors on Twitter right now, Megan, uh, Mini Megs 303, wonders who's going to be the favored running back one in Denver. Mm -hmm. I think it's a valid question, especially if if you're a fantasy football player right now, you know that your draft is coming. Um, or if you're a player like me, you know you're thinking redraft. So what uh, what right now would you say? Who's who's the favored running back one in Denver, and how does that play out over the course of 17 games? Well, it's really tough to say right now because we know that the Broncos' plan, at least, is for Melvin Gordon to be the primary back. But I think that with what we've seen from Javante Williams, I think you can sprinkle in – a little bit of both, right? I'm going to go back to our good friend, Tim, Tim Jenkins, his uh, analogy about steak potatoes. Look, you know, unlike the, unlike the salt and pepper, the conversation's not on the table, brother. And the reality <laughs> is, is you have two talented guys that you can mix in. And like I said, we saw the Broncos open up against the Titans last year with both Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay. And look, it, it looked fun, right? We didn't get to see too much of that because Philip Lindsay ended up getting a turf toe injury, literally two plays after that had happened. So what can you do with these two guys? Because I feel like you could put a guy like Javante Williams inside the slot just for fun. You can have a two back pistol. You could fake the handoff with one to toss it or option read off of another. I mean, there's so many things you can do. I think Gordon will be the primary carry guy, but if look, if you need a really surprise player, a guy who's probably going to see a little bit more action as a receiver and as a rusher, probably have more of a maximized opportunity and limited attempts in comparison to Gordon. It's hard to argue against a guy like Javante Williams, man, but you know, most of these fantasy experts are labeling him as one A and one B. Yeah, and and that's understandable given the fact that the Broncos have been super high on Williams. You know, they've they talked about him as their running back one in the 2021 20, NFL draft. You heard in the behind the scenes videos, you know, comparisons to Nick Chubb, Zeke Elliott. Mm. I mean, they're not throwing around any small names when they're talking about Javante Williams. So the team obviously loves him. And I think with Vic Fangio after the after that first game against the Vikings talking about how, yep, he's pretty much exactly what we thought he was going to be. I think the team is really high on him. So Oh, Melvin Gordon obviously is the the incumbent, the the running back one. I thought had a pretty underrated season, frankly, last year after coming you know coming back from those those fumbles early on. Um, I, I think there's a clear pecking order right now in the one two, um, and then when Mike Boone comes back healthy, you know you have an explosive option at the number three. But I think that the favored num running back one in Denver this year is definitely Melvin Gordon, but that doesn't mean Javante is not going to get his, you know, touches. It's 17 games. It's 17 games. There's plenty to go around. 
I, I don't think that either one of these guys is going to have, you know, a shortage of touches barring, barring any injuries. So knock on wood there and, and hopefully a fully healthy season. Hopefully we get to argue all year long about carries between those two guys. I look forward to it. And the thing I look at too, sir, if the Broncos can somehow find a way offensively, let's say to get like a two score lead in the game, if their defense is playing as stifling as we know that they can be based on their potential and what they demonstrated already at you factor it in, you can run the ball the rest of the game in which most teams should take a book out of what Kyle Shanahan didn't do after being up 28 to three. That's uh, you know, that's the big key <laughs> run the football. And, and look, I also want to make that point too, because the Broncos found themselves down in several games, sometimes by two scores, sometimes by three scores. And people are saying, why did they abandon the run? Well, guess what? You can't run the ball when you're down two to three scores in the, in the third quarter. You're going to run out of time. You're not going to have an opportunity to get a chance to come back and win. So that, to me, I think is the biggest thing for the Broncos. If they can get a lead, they can play ball control defense, and if they can run the football effectively, Sarah, tell you what, the Broncos are going to be a pretty successful team here in 2021, man. I can't wait to break down all the action with you every single day and also on Sunday's post-game reports. It's going to be fun, man. But uh, thank you so much, Broncos Country, for your questions that you sent in to Sarah, myself. Every single week, we're going to do a little bit of a mailbag or a Twitter Tuesday-type segment here on the show. So if you ever have your questions, just tweet us, at Cody Rourke NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos. But with that said, Broncos Country, make sure, if you haven't done so already, that you subscribe to the Lockdown Broncos podcast, the video format on YouTube. You hit the subscribe button, you hit the little bell, and that'll automatically notify you anytime we upload a show or if we're going to premiere one so you never miss out on the video action not to mention you can take us with you on the go on your favorite audio podcasting platforms and don't forget to tell your friends and family who are Broncos fans to make sure that they are locked in to the Lockdown Broncos podcast I'm Cody Rourke speaking for my amazing co-host Sarah Bettinger we're gonna see you tomorrow for a brand new episode Lockdown Broncos